Oh, I know. Everybody wants to know what's happening down in Perth, Australia. It's going to be this weekend, right? Is that right? Is that... Yeah, The Rock knows when it's happening. You know why? Because they kept asking The Rock, Rock, will you go down to Perth? Well, could you come down to Perth, Australia? Listen, The Rock can't be there in Perth. The Rock wishes he could be there in Perth. He's going to be there in spirit, and that's all that matters. The People's Champ spirit is going to be in Perth. But here's who else is going to be in Perth. Grayson Waller, doing the Waller effect. It's that show. It's a big show. It's a big show here in the States, and it's an even bigger show down there in Australia. You know why? You know why, Dumbo? Because Australia Dumbo. is his country. It's his home country. The people are going to go crazy for him, but here's what's happening. Here's the bullshit that's happening now down in Australia. Cody Rhodes and his little girlfriend, Seth Rollins, are going to go on the Waller effect. Here's the thing. I need you and you and this goof holding the camera and this one holding the microphone over here. I need all of you guys to make sure that Perth knows some old shit happening. And if those guys, those guys meaning Cody and his little girlfriend Seth, if they start talking trash, let The Rock know. Tell The Rock because here's what's going to happen. The Rock is going to slap the piss out of both of them just like that. As a matter of fact, if they talk trash, The Rock will fly down there to Perth before that interview is over and he'll do it. Don't wonder why The Rock can make it that quick. The Rock makes magic happen. Do you understand? All right, that's all The Rock has to say about Perth. Perth, Austra Perth Australia, get ready, because the WWE is coming. Let The Rock know if those two jabronis talk trash. Give you some mail! What the Rock is cooking. All right, so that was The Rock. On Perth, Australia. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Tonight. I am your host, Brian. Along with me is my usual co host, Drew Blazer. He's not on video tonight, he's in the Discord. Uh, Ricky <laughs> and Biggs. Welcome in, boys. How are you guys doing tonight? It is wonderful. Fresh off of a uh, dynamite here. Uh, I w there is one thing I think we need to talk about coming out of Dynamite. Ricky, you you specifically wanted to talk about this. What did you think about Wardlow's promo tonight, Ricky? <laughs> Son, I think that they're just they're marking out to the damage that they've caused to their own company, and they can't help themselves mentioning WWE in some way or even the Punk situation. You know, the the Young Bucks have done it several times since they've been on this new gimmick. And now Wardlow's doing it. And then you had the debacle last week with uh, Darby Allen. Oh, and Cody. Essentially getting the entire arena to chant Cody, who's not, you know, the biggest baby face of the other. It's just in the whole business. In the whole biz uh, wrestling we, business. We still enjoyed it, Ricky. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, it's... Hey. I'm not sure what, what business sense it makes to have the two biggest baby faces of the other company uh, you know, get reactions on your show. But yeah. Didn't uh didn't Rhea even make a tweet the other day or something about that? About like AEW making references to them all the time. Uh she did, but something. I I don't remember exactly what she said. Uh yeah, I don't either. I do remember her doing something like that. Uh yeah. By the way, uh, Wardlow's context of the promo, right? So he, he mentioned how he beat Punk so bad that his body is still falling apart from it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read over the last few moments of that match that they had. Uh, let's see. The match took place on January 12, 2022, and Punk did oh not start God. having any injury problems until 2023. Uh so Wardlow did his at the time the Powerbomb Symphony four power bombs. He wanted to go for the cover, but MJF interrupted and wanted more. Wardlow got Punk up to seven power bombs. Then MJF wanted Punk to go through the table on the outside of the ring, so Wardlow did it. Wardlow tried to win by count out. Punk gets up at nine after seven power bombs, one of them through a table. Uh gets into the ring after nine at nine. MJF wants another power bomb, but when MJF and Wardlow get into it, and Punk wins it with a distraction roll up, does that sound like Punk got injured in that match to you? Does that sound like know. Wardlow beat him so bad that Punk is still getting injuries from that match? Well, they no. 
<laughs> Selective they, memory. They, they make their own history. They think that we're all stupid and we forget things, so... Biggs, no surprise. Biggs apparently yeah, can't hear hey, I, I hear you now. I was that bug. I had to leave and rejoin. Okay, so Biggs oh, is here now. All right, good. Big... It's Biggs! Did you have any input you wanted to give on the uh, MJF and, uh, sorry, uh, Wardlow promo tonight, Biggs? Or just in general of, you know, M- uh, AW plugging uh, other stars from other companies? I kind of tuned. I kind of tuned out halfway through the show. Oh, Biggs didn't even watch. Oh, oh, oh my! I actually skimmed through the show just a little bit ago. I didn't watch it live for the most part. I caught up at the end, but I can look at it real quick. Yeah, if, if you want to kind of listen to the promo a little bit while we go on, and then you can give your input. Okay. Can I uh, add one other thing to that real quick before we move off that topic? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I don't know if. It... I'm sure Blazer, if he's the only one who's watched the whole thing besides me, but maybe Bri picked it up or Biggs. Did Wardlow even mention MJF's name? Because he, I, I feel like the only person by name he called was Samoa Joe, which to me is telling if he's just using catchphrases for the other two guys. Maybe Max is not coming back. Actually, yeah, you're right, because I was getting confused to who he was talking about. Because at first I thought when he mentioned the punk stuff, I thought he was talking about MJF. And then he started going oh. into our former champion is now her also. And it's like, okay, so you weren't talking about MJF, so that must have been CM Punk. So, yeah, he wasn't mentioning anybody's name until he got to Samoa Joe. That, that is interesting now that you say that. He, he didn't mention anyone's name. Yes, CM Punk was the best in the world reference. Yeah, the real world's MJF. champion. Yeah. Yeah, that too, and then MJF yeah. was the uh, best right, than all, all of, or I'm better than all of now. you thing. Yeah, the better than, better than inter- you. Easy Biggs interrupting me. <laughs> I was just say I'm listening to it. Go ahead. <laughs> so Biggs, he did not mention them by name? No. Now, B- Biggs is listening to it. He can give us his recap here in a minute. Uh, briefly, just staying on the AEW, um, I thought tonight's Daniel Garcia promo like the rookie huh. knows, I, I was kind of crapping on it when they announced Christian versus uh, Garcia for Revolution, but that was a fantastic promo from uh, Garcia. Um, Just and- didn't, didn't seem like there was a lot of crowd reaction, but again, that's when I was telling Ricky, it just it sucks that they get these small crowds because I bet they didn't have a lot of people there. And being yeah, there last week, that, I, we really we saw how how bad these crowds are. Oh, man. I don't know. It just makes me depressed. Tell him what I said, son. No, you tell him, Ricky. Go ahead. I did make sure that Blazer remembered that the crowds at AEW shows are still, in fact, bigger than the crowds that Impact was drawing at the Hogan Sting era studio shows. So Uh, they're still doing better than that. No, no, I agree with that. That's true. The issue to me is not even that they're getting the small crowds. It's the fact that they're booking 20,000-seat arenas and downscaling yeah. them for 2,000 people. That yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, it's kind of weird. And a lot of people, like the insiders, the melters, whoever you want to say, they're speculating that it's because Tony Khan doesn't want to get rid of the giant, the giant Contron. And uh-oh. that is why he's uh-oh. booking the big buildings. Thank you, so, Tom. But- but yeah, the Daniel Garcia promo was good. It just I wish there was more of a reaction to it. But yeah, with Christian the cage. I I noticed what you're talking about when Christian was talking because I could hear Christian's voice echoing off the walls inside the arena because yeah, there, there was see, no yeah, noise. That's not, that's not good. So yeah, yeah, it, the, the, they're booking these big giant buildings for no reason. But yeah. So was the Garcia promo, in your opinion, good because of the passion and the realness? Oh yeah. Or do you think it was because Christian Cage is such a damn good heel that he can get people? Uh, over well, to be honest, I think no. it was fifty-fifty on both of them. I think yeah, Christian did a cool. good job of setting it up. Like he, you know, he yeah. lobbed the pitch out there, and then Garcia just knocked it out of the park. I thought it was great. And then yeah, speaking I'm not of that, happened on Garcia. I'm just saying we all know Christian. Well, I think we're all in agreement that Christian Christian is probably Christian the best Cage. Heel. Ricky yeah. is very over. Yeah. yeah, I think Christian brought the best out of Garcia. 
Speaking of that, in, in your guys' Discord there, I posted this. It's also going to show on the stream. Sean Ross oh. Sapp tweeted this. He typed the address that Christian gave yeah. on Dynamite into Google. Did you see what it oh, was? God. It's a legit yeah. cemetery. You think that's funny, bro? <laughs> Are you a cock just like Christian K? <laughs> Christian posted that or Sean Ross Sapp posted it? Sean Ross Sapp posted it. Christian gave an address during his promo about asking where Garcia's dad's residence is. And this is the address. Oh, my God. That's terrible. <laughs> it is, but it's yeah. not. <laughs> you guys are sitting here laughing at this. Son, he's the greatest heel in modern history. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I don't know about modern history because MJF, when he was a legit heel, was was probably the best. But did he stoop to those levels? Uh, you know, probably worse. MJF, I, um, let's be honest. You just MJF kind of got cheap heat a lot of the times, but it worked. I heard the uh, well, that guy would be very nasty at times too, though. That's what I mean. He was able to go further along yeah. than anybody else. Like, like in WWE, nobody can do that. Oh, I'm trying to. Are you scared the crap out of me? Do what? You guys trying to make me miss Maxwell? Oh, we all do. That that actually leads into my next topic. Believe it or not, that's a perfect segue, Blazer. So thank you. We had MJF as world champion for a long time, and then he dropped it to Samoa Joe. What do you guys think about Joe's title reign? Do you think it's living up to the expectation, or do you think it's been a kind of a disappointment? I think it's been all right. I mean, what what are the expectations? Well, I think I think a lot of people, for some reason, I I guess maybe I'm one of them. Yeah. I kind of expected Joe to be more of a what do you say, an ass kicker, where he's like just defending the title, yeah. like you know, more often than what he's done. I guess how many times has he defended it now? Once, just once. He's yeah. only had one match. Like exactly. Taking all these, taking all these names and cutting all these epic promos. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just doesn't feel like he's done that. He had the the thing with Hook, which was okay, I guess. And then he, yeah. ever since that weird promo after Hook lost, it's like Joe's just kind of been there. You know what I mean? Like he's not really doing a lot. I don't yeah. know. If, I think they're going to actually do what we want them to do, or at least what we've discussed in the past, and I think Swerve's going to become the champion. Oh, yeah, uh, he'll be next. Swerve's over. I think he's more over than Hangman Adam Page is right now, and I oh, think yeah. he's definitely more entertaining than Joe as champion. Um, because right now, you know, Blazer just asked about what's the expectation. The expectation was... Samoa Joe was going to be a fighting champion, and he's had one match, and we're now in the third week of February. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of what I was getting at. It's like, at least give me more promos, you know what I mean? Like, he's not even doing that. He's just been well, yeah, kind of there. Yeah, getting interrupted by Swerve and Hangman Adam Page. That's true. I, I don't Every know. Every promo's I, been the three of them. Maybe, Maybe that's what it is for me. Because I think I'm kind of tired of the hangman and swerve thing, and Joe's kind of being caught up in it. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah, they're There's, overshadowing. Yeah, the champion. Joe's just kind of being stuck in the middle of a feud that's been going on for too long. Not so. that those two are the Rock and John Cena, but it's kind of like the Rock, John Cena, and the Miz. Yeah, where they're mm -hmm. overshadowing the Miz as champion. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Similar, similar. So, do you guys think Swerve wins a Revolution? Or do you think I they're think gonna, it's going to be a little bit? Possibility if they want to save face of the company. I think it could be a good kickstart for the company. I think maybe, Joe's going to retain. Maybe Swerve I think actually. Swerve, Swerve gets his moment later on. That's kind of what I think, one. because I feel like it'd be kind of weird if Joe just drops it after he just. Yeah, won. they're. I don't think they're going to do it right now. Well, one, one title after defense. The Wardlow promo too. That's true. Where does Wardlow oh. fit in all this? Oh boy! And then we still got Adam Cole kind of out there, you know, yeah. limping around. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. Adam, son, <laughs> and and why did they bring out Adam Cole for commentary last week in Austin, Texas? Uh, yes. What was the point of that? I it was know. a very short jobber match with Wardlow and the local guy from Austin, Texas. Hey, 
Hey, don't forget, like AW, AW got a kickstart oh. tonight. You know, you know what will save them? This oh, Orange God. Cassidy and Matt Taven feud. That will get it done. Son, well, <laughs> like I told Ricky, I'm actually a big fan of Matt Taven <laughs> after last week. No, that was enjoyable. That was a great match. I don't like the... So this is the thing what I'll say about death matches. It's weird, but it's like watching them on TV, it kind of sucks. But when you watch them live in person, they're pretty entertaining. It was pretty good. Yeah. But I'm sure you guys seen it on TV. It kind of sucked. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, it with... I never watched Dynamite last week, so. What? Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I was going to watch it, but I didn't get to watch it live. And then it just kind of like after three days later, it's like I already know everything. So why? Oh, I understand. So. But, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't. It probably won great on TV and the picture in picture and all that. So. Well, no, every, everything is always better when you're there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most Although, things are, but that match definitely was better in person. Uh, like let's, let's see. I saw the promo. Oh, my. And now we go to Biggs for his thought. All right, Biggs, go ahead. Uh, free advertisement, I'll say that. Free. What? <laughs> <laughs> that, that sums it up. That's what we've all pretty much agreed on. Yeah, it, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I, I don't understand. It. Free, free CM Punk, Punk advertisement more than you already have? Like, yeah, yeah. I, know, I know. I just don't, especially when he's out injured right now. You know, you're kind of helping keep his name out there now. So, yeah. oh, well, we were talking about Swerve and Hangman. They didn't really do much tonight with the two of them. Do you guys still think this double turn is happening? Uh, yeah. I well, we just I think it already it. has. Yeah. Well, you think it's we fully complete now? And I don't know if they do make Swerve champ, then yes. If if he doesn't, then I could see him just still riding it out. Hangman, who was Hangman yeah. yelling at tonight? Off camera, it was the the doctor or somebody. Remember, I told you he looked like he injured his ankle. I don't even know no. if he'll make it to the end. Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, he did. He did look like he was hurt. Uh, no, I was talking about backstage when he was he had th- two guys with him for the six man match, and he uh. Who was he? he was oh, yelling at RVD. Him. Yeah, RVD. Yeah, it was RVD and Hook, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he just like all of a sudden went off and started screaming at him, and RVD just kind of looked around like, what the hell is that guy's problem? And then was Swerve even yeah. on the show tonight? I, I would already I would already say the double turns kind of happened because Swerve's getting all the positive reaction. And was he? Nobody really cares about Hangman right now, so. Was he on tonight? Swerve. Swerve was in the I'm watching his entrance right now. Okay, that's right. All right. Yeah, I was I was doing all kinds of stuff when the show was on, so I didn't fully get to watch that. Oh man. But uh, he didn't really have any big moments, to well, be that, honest with you. Yeah, that's uh, probably why I didn't remember he was on the show. Carried that team. Uh one more well, I guess two more things from AEW, then we'll move on. Uh we were talking about MJF. Do you think that since he's been gone, that that's what's missing from AEW? Is just MJF, or is it more than that? Oh, there's yeah. probably more to it. Yeah, I, I'll say this: I've gotten used to him for so long on TV, being the main attraction. That it's like yeah, he was out him. Yeah. Well, they're missing. They're missing more though. It's not just him. He used to get there's amped up every week just to see him on TV, and now he's. There. Well, the the reason can't I asked, really uh, can't really put your finger on it, but they're missing something. Well, the reason I asked yeah. is because the last few weeks there's been like a small little bubbling online about people saying that what? AEW has improved since since MJF's been gone. What? So, do you Who think the there's any? Do you think that there's any truth to that? Because a lot of these people, you know, the the AEW fans that don't like the quote unquote sports entertainment and storylines. Oh my god. They're under the impression that MJF was the one that was encouraging all that stuff. And that since he's been gone, it's all gone away and AEW well, has improved. I guess it probably just depends on what your taste is, I guess. I'm a sports Everyone's entertainment different. guy, so yeah. I like MJF, so I like a good mix. I agree. And I actually thought tonight's dynamite had a good mix. I thought it had a few different things. There the, the heart 
the hardcore AEW fans are probably pure pro wrestling fans, I guess. Which oh, I can say I'm probably not that. They'd so. be fine with just wall to wall matches with no promos and no commercials in between. Like they'd be fine yeah, with that. And, and, and good that's fine. For you, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. It's just that's not going to draw any type of major audience. It's just not. No, just just your uh, you know two percenters or whatever. <laughs> And once again, that leads to the discussion of these fans online that just because you don't like wall-to-wall wrestling, then you should stop watching AEW and go watch The Fed. And I, I get so tired of hearing well, that. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we are. How about <laughs> that? Maybe we are. I think probably most of the fans that watch AEW probably watch The Fed. I hate to tell these AEW fans, but most That's... of the AEW fans are WWE fans. And most oh, yeah. of the WWE fans are AEW fans. Please. Especially the fake ones online who make up these usernames. Yeah, it's it's make just it look like they hate it. A loud and bunch of jerks. Pictures of egg. Yeah, or or just a random oh. Pikachu. You know, f your mom <laughs> with a Pikachu yeah. avatar. But uh, God, rather God, than God. make their username like AEW Defender. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they just don't. It's a very loud, small portion of the fan base that wants to act like they're a hundred percent AEW and they don't watch WWE. But yet they know every little thing that's happening in WWE. So, I think MJF even brought that up one time during an interview. Yeah, probably. <laughs> he was vocal about that. That's not that's the bad. Just, it's a different topic. The uh, to answer your question about Max being gone, I'll just say this: I watch AEW for five reasons. Two of those reasons were on the show tonight. And one of those reasons hasn't been on the show since he got injured slash dropped the title at World's End. So, yes, I think it makes a huge difference. I do think that missing Britt Baker is also a huge difference because yeah. she was a pretty big girl. Yep. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talent that don't do anything. Like, Thunder Rosa has just a match on Saturday but hasn't been around much since she's been back i don't maybe that's like hasn't done anything relevant yeah i mean it could be a plan thing maybe she's still you know dealing with some injury wants to take it slow or whatever i don't know but there's so many women in this division that could be doing stuff and like i said i watched aw for five reasons and tony storm is one of them i think this gimmick that she's on right now is is amazing well, yeah, the the Tony Storm thing is something that you build the division around right now, and they started doing that. They brought in Deanna, and it's already elevated <laughs> the division. Uh, and then obviously, if Mercedes comes in, which that was the other topic well, tonight, was going to be Mercedes, but I think I'm going to hold that topic until she debuts. Because we all and know then we can, and then we can talk about it some more. Uh, well, and I'm not, I'm not really even sure why Britt Baker hasn't been on TV. Well, that's Jesus. that was the topic that I had uh, was potential opponents for Mercedes, but I think we're going to wait till she debuts and we can talk about it some more then, because I think things will be a little clearer by then. Well, according to Britt Baker herself, she hasn't been on TV because fans said they wanted less of her, so she disappeared. What? Well, personally, I honestly I know she's had back problems for a while. I honestly oh, think that they've put her aside to let her heal up until Mercedes debuts, and I think it's going to be Britt versus Mercedes at Double or Nothing. That'd and is cool. Jamie Hayter coming back soon, too? Yeah, supposedly she is. Oh. The women's division is going to get a pretty big spike here in the summer, I think. Yeah, you're so, just not really not feeling it too much right now, but it's coming. I, I think it's going to hit all of a sudden in the summer. I really do. Yes, yes. Good. Uh, all right, we're going to move on from AEW. We got a few WWE topics here. Oh, um, oh, actually, no. Sorry, there's one more we have to talk about the AEW. This is kind of important. That we, we, I don't know how we didn't bring this up. I thought you were going fast enough. What about uh, Ric Flair and the Young Bucks? <laughs> is there a possibility that this match becomes a six man and Ric Flair gets inserted into this match? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. asked Blazer because I couldn't even understand it. But what the hell did he say? He was He's telling on. He was telling Renee that he is upset because when he signed on to AEW, he was supposed to be more involved in Sting's last run. And it's he is basically life. Yeah. 
And he has basically been pushed to the side, and he's not been allowed to be on TV and all this stuff. And he was expected to be more involved in all of this. And he's going to oh. start exploring his other options, is what he said. And then he went and knocked on the Young Bucks' door and said, can we talk? Well, son, Sting hasn't even been involved in his retirement. He's only had, like, <laughs> two TV matches. Uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but the, I, I understand that, though, because you don't want to hurt Sting two weeks before his last match. And he was only wrestling, like, once, what, once a month before? So you're so. telling me they made... Bill and uh, the wannabe Rock, I can't remember his name. Ricky Stark. They took the titles off of them just to put them on the Bucks. Oh, I would not be shocked. <laughs> Let's be real here. Now, I think Biggs, did Biggs say this? That it could be a ploy and that uh, Ric Flair will actually turn on the Young Bucks to help Sting? Was that you that said that, Biggs? That was not me, no. Okay, somebody said that. Maybe I read it online. player in the game. So. Yeah, somebody said that. The, there was a theory that he's just going to the Young Bucks to actually help Sting. Yes. So that could be interesting. I, I was just curious if you guys thought there was a re- realistic possibility of it becoming six man. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, who would be the third man for Sting? And I, that's the thing. I don't know. It'd have to be somebody. I don't know. It could be somebody Kenny like uh, uh, Kenny. Yeah. I'm good with. I'm good with seeing another Ric Flair heel run. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> he nut shot Sting to lose Sting's last match. Sting, yes. you may be <laughs> retiring, but I will never retire. <laughs> the streak is over. You cut to that one fan from WrestleMania 30 with the shocked face. The streak <laughs> is over. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to wrap up the AEW talk. In addition to that fan at 40, WrestleMania 40. Do you know what happens? <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap up the AEW talk there. We're going to move on to WWE. Uh, we just listened to the Rock promo earlier, and he had some words yeah. to say about Perth. Particularly, he had some uh, foul I, language. I want to point out some things he said in that promo last week. Go ahead. If you notice his mannerisms, he was pointing at Roman during some of that, and he wasn't holding up a one. He was holding up an L. Actually, Biggs, that is exactly – I was going to bring that up. I actually have a picture of that. I will show it to you guys now. That'd be a ploy to turn against Roman. If it ever sends. Hold on. Why is it not sending? Hold on. There oh, by go. the way, uh, back-to-back opening matches two weeks in a row goes to a draw. An AEW? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know about. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was a good idea. But as Biggs pointed out here, this uh, after the Rock's promo on uh, supposedly Cody Rhodes, they all oh. hold up the one, and the Rock is not holding up the one. He is yeah. holding up an L. And I could what not find if, the picture of it, but when he was, if, go ahead, Big. What if at Mania the rest of the bloodline tries to interfere, but they combat it, and then Roman expects the Rock to come to his aid, and then the Rock starts going down the ramp, and then he stops. Well, I was gonna say, when the Rock was guaranteeing, supposedly he was talking to Cody, looking into the camera, and talking to Cody, saying, I'm going to make sure that you are what you are at WrestleMania, and that is a loser. And he pointed at the camera. When the camera switched, the camera was behind Roman, and The Rock was pointing at Roman when he and said, Roman I'm going to make sure you're Roman a loser. wasn't looking at Yeah, him. and Roman was looking away. So they've already started these little teases, and I, I think what's going to happen is The Rock is going to start calling shots in the bloodline, and Roman has shown before yeah. that he does not take orders from anyone else. So um, I, I think what's going to happen is those two are going to have a little bit of disagreement heading into WrestleMania, and then it's going to be a and, he, and Rock and won't Rock, help him. And The Rock might convince the others to go against uh, Roman. Yep. Well, I was going to say, so tell Solo, he could tell Solo that if Roman is out, you're the head of the table now. Yep. Well, so, yeah. Say, um, Ricky's underwater, so. 
there is a discourse between Solo and Jimmy also. As you know, people are making a thing about the handshake thing, but it's been going on for a couple of weeks now, ever since Roman said, You're the head of the you're the next in line or whatever, and Jimmy got pissed. Well Yeah, Jimmy's not accepted. He's just kind of there. Solo wasn't happy when Jimmy came back, remember? Yeah, I don't none of them I think really care for him to be there. They just kinda of accepted it. I, I think he's just kind of there out of, you know, like uh what was it Paul said about, about Sammy the one yeah. time? Would you rather them pissing what outside of the castle or inside the castle or something like that? Yeah. They so, could uh, they could play into the rock whispering into Cody's ear too and make it seem like something else. That needs to be addressed. They gotta bring that up. They have not brought They could that play up. that and turn it into something completely different than what we think. What is this? The when Cody originally gave up his spot at Mania to Rock and Rock did that whole hugged Cody and whispered in his ear. Oh yeah. They still have not really addressed what that was about. They could they could turn that into something different like later on. Um so well while we're on this topic, do you think we're getting a tag match night one and then the real match night two? That's I don't know because don't so. because see now they're setting up isn't one of the chamber matches uh, for Seth's title at Mania. Yeah. Yeah. So that would make Seth work two matches and Cody work two yeah, matches I, and I, Roman I work two matches. I don't think they'd want him to do that, especially <laughs> no. coming right back from an injury. All three of no, them it's, working it's two matches. Much. That's not good. It's not happening. No, it's too much. I think the tag match could end up happening. It's just I don't think it'll be at Mania. Cody could also be trying to get help. Because they made it obvious on Raw Monday that there was going to be interference. Yeah, wasn't that the exact same like finish, pretty much? Yeah. As what happened? Yeah, the exact Mania? same. It was like a, it was like looking in the mirror. It happened again like last year. So yeah, then Drew picked up the win there. But yeah. yeah. Uh, also leading into this. Uh, actually, we already just talked about that. Cody getting help to fight off the Bloodline WrestleMania 40. So do we think that Seth? Obviously, we know Seth is probably going to try to help. We think The Rock is going to yeah, try to help. Jay. 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 Uh, it's pr- it Sammy. might be where it goes. Sammy. Maybe Sammy. You're right. What about somebody like Randy Orton? He, You know, the, the way to sum up this storyline would be for everyone that Roman has screwed. Yes. I so know everyone that's no, available no. and that's like I, a page. I was thinking this the other day. Exactly, Brian. Yes. Everyone that has together. gotten screwed over by Roman comes out and just Cody lays out the bloodline. From his, from and his then you have the that's rock. That's like a big party. That's a big party. And then oh, you have the rock put the final nail in the coffin. And that right there just sets Roman over. Roman there. asks for his help and Rock says no. Uh, is it a no this, DQ match? This could be so great. It is as not, far as I know, no. It is not going to be a no DQ match because they're going to play up the whole Cody getting screwed out of the finish thing. Yeah, so they're not going to get away with any fall, yeah. any any uh, interference. As long as nobody hits Roman or Cody, you can have all the interference on the outside that you want. Yeah, people can attack each other. They just can't. You just have them. what'll happen is there will be people running out, and probably Cody fights them off for a minute, but they're going to start to overwhelm him, and then that's when the other people will come in to help. Actually, you know what? I think probably at the last minute it will become a no DQ match. I could. They could. Yeah, I remember Triple H was getting ticked off too. So. If they really want to yeah. overbook it, they'll do no, like a hell in a cell and shit. That's on his brand. He's getting pissed off at the bloodline. He hates oh my, it. he's getting pissed too. <laughs> oh. I'm just saying, Nick Aldis has his problems with the bloodline. That's <laughs> actually Biggs. Thank you for the segue. That's the next topic, son. Go Nick, on. So, out of this whole bloodline thing with Cody, Rock, Roman, all them, management had for the first time in forever. Board members are involved in a storyline. General managers oh. are involved. We got Nick Khan oh. and The Rock seemingly teaming up versus Triple H. What does oh. that actually lead to? Like, is there a situation where you see any of that yeah. actually leading to anything? Because I don't uh, even know what you could do. Uh, probably nothing. It's just it's just gonna go away. I think it's 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 nothing. In a perfect world. Triple H has oh, okay. one more match against The Rock, but that well, ain't gonna happen. Don't get don't get me started, son. I yeah, wish it could happen. 
Yeah, I know. It would it be sucks. perfect for Mania this year. You know, Triple H keeps The Rock out of the main event, so The Rock challenges Triple uh, H this year. It'd be perfect. Uh, ironic yeah. about that is, but it won't happen. He, he just brought back the WWE Rival Show, and it's The Rock. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, just to te- just to tease us even more, big. That but episode can... of WWE Rivals this weekend, Rock and Triple H. Yeah, it's sad. It really oh. is. I would have loved that. Would have been perfect. Like a Meltzer, that idiot. What? I'm sorry. I didn't say that out loud. Edit that out, bro. What did you say? So. Dave Meltzer Weird. reporting a, a, a. Did you see it? Did you, that was. Did I it? was getting ready to bring that up. So you guys know that promo that Triple H and The Rock filmed probably ten years ago when they thought it was going to be Rock versus Triple H at Mania in the locker room. Remember that? Yeah. Where they were kind of one up in each other. Take a step back. We're a little too close. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So Meltzer, for some reason, completely forgot that they filmed that ten years ago. And started oh, going around saying that they filmed that at the Rumble. No, at, no, after the uh, press the uh, press conference, the WrestleMania kickoff thing, they filmed that backstage because they were going to do Triple H versus The Rock at Mania this Son. year, but they decided not to. Tri- Triple H doesn't even look like that anymore. That's what people were saying. They both looked like they aged 10 They're years older. in reverse. Yeah. And also, you know who was standing between the two of them? Steph. Yeah. Stephanie McMahon, who's not even in the freaking company anymore. We haven't seen her on TV, and yeah, she's not even in the company. <laughs> so yeah, Dave lost it this week. Oh, that's sad, man. That's sad to see that. Come on, Dave. I feel bad for that guy, because, you know, whether you want to admit it or not, the guy has his place in wrestling, but... Yeah, a lot of flops here in recent years. That guy oh, can't even that get That guy the... can't even get in the building. Um, so we're still talking about the bloodline. We talked about, you know, all this all the other people revolved around it. One person we haven't talked about is Paul Heyman. When it's all over and done, do you guys think Paul Heyman gets kicked out of the bloodline? Do you think he goes on to manage someone else? Well, you know what I think about this, Bri, because you know who exactly I want him to manage. So, yes. It's funny because he's on SmackDown. Now. You are, you're, you're in the Braun Breaker camp, right? Bronson Steiner, yes. And they, <laughs> you're calling him Steiner. They, uh, they actually planted the seeds for that, what, last year at NXT? Yes. Because they had a backstage thing where Heyman actually managed Braun Breaker for one night. And then the Undertaker choke slammed him. Oh, that's right. Yeah, then then Bron got got his ass kicked by the Undertaker <laughs> for no reason. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah. So everybody leaning toward the Bron. Is there anybody else that you think he could? Is Drew Blazer mm-hmm. still here? Can't think of anyone. Drew Blazer. Did he leave? I don't think Blazer. No, he's still here. All right. Okay. Well, you know, someone else that Paul could manage, but I don't think he needs it. Tell me if you guys think this would be a good fit. Paul Heyman and Gunther. Nah, Gunther has pretty good mic skills. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, as far as looks. Like, as far as, you know, Gunther walking out with Paul Heyman. I think it would I look good. I think he needs it. No, I, he doesn't need it. I don't think he needs it. I, it just, in my head, it just looks good on paper. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it'd be okay, but no. it's not necessary. No, I, I don't think so. That? I don't uh, think so, boy. Well, speaking of Paul Heyman's uh, former clients, Brock Lesnar versus Gunther was supposed to happen this year. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. Do you guys think Brock comes back? And if he doesn't, who do you think Gunther faces at Mania? Well, you know, I am a big Easy E fan, and he pretty much thinks that Brock is done in the UFC and the WWE now because they're owned by the same company. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that we should probably wait until all of the 
information is brought forward in the trial, but yeah, I don't, I mean, it's, it's hard to say right now that he could or would come back, but you never know. Who would you like to see? Go Go ahead. If he never does, the last thing he did was pass the torch to Cody. Is that the last time we saw him? Yeah. Yeah. He shook Cody's hand in the middle of the ring. That is not a bad way to go out. And, and then uh, later on, I think he should face at Mania. I think Gunther should. Man, to be honest with you, depending on what they do with Elimination Chamber, I could see Gunther going against Drew McIntyre. But I just think Drew's getting so much of a push right now that that's not going to happen. I don't know. So Gunther's on Raw. I don't really know anybody that's really in line to face Gunther. It's weird. Like, they're doing Jey Uso and Gunther now, which means that's not happening at the Elimination Chamber or at WrestleMania. Well, I think we have the Jey match now. I think we're all going to get Jey versus Jimmy at this point. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. They, they Well, I meant to say they already did the match. But they, uh, I guess maybe, do you think maybe it could be Chad Gable? Uh, at Elimination Chamber? No, oh, no that, Gunther's not going to be at Elimination that. Chamber. He can't travel yeah. outside the country. Do you think that they do Gable versus Gunther at, at Mania? Or, you know, they could do. They could do something old school and have a like a six man ladder match for the IC title at Mania. And just have Gunther. Yeah. That would be a good way to have Gunther lose it, too. Because more yeah, than likely, more than likely, I think Gunther after Mania is going to start going for that world heavyweight title. With, especially with Punk being hurt now, I would not be surprised if Gunther is the one that beats Rollins. So, I I so feel yeah, like be, uh, title at Mania. Yeah, I, I think cool Gunther if, will lose uh, his title at Mania. Be cool if Gunther faced Bobby Lashley. Has that happened before? You know what? I don't think it has, yeah. but that would be a good match. Oh, good. Yeah. Big, uh, Blazer. But I don't see Bobby yeah. beating Gunther at Mania. Probably not. Because I I uh, feel like. The best thing to do with Gunther is the night after Mania is to have him start going after that world heavyweight title. I think he's there now. And he's mentioned it already. He's mentioned a bit how he how he's ready to go after that title. And who's going to be the world champ, son? Is it going to be Seth I, freaking wrong? I'm telling you, I or think Drew. it's going to be Gunther that beats Seth. That's my oh, early Seth. prediction. I think Gunther wins it in France at Backlash. As Seth beat Drew well, McIntyre at Mania for the third time just to piss him off. Well, well, apparently there's this thing where Gunther can't leave the United States or whatever is past. Apparently that by the time the bash in Berlin comes around, that's going to expire. Yeah, so I, it may even be fixed by backlash. I didn't think about that. I hope it's fixed by backlash. You know what, though? Gunther winning the world heavyweight title in Berlin. Oh, hmm. God. That might be pretty interesting. That'd be fun. So where where in the hell does Damian Priest fit in this shit? He has yeah, got that he has question. got this money in the bank. Out. And he's only got like what three months before the money in the bank again? Oh god. But you know what's funny about all of that is that I have been saying that I thought Priest was gonna cash in at Mania and everybody kind of agreed with that. But you know now what? I don't say that I don't think that's gonna happen. No, you just you just gave me an idea. I think it is gonna happen. I think oh, Drew McIntyre beats Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, and this whole thing has been happening with Drew McIntyre oh, costing God. Damian his cash-ins. Damian oh. cashes in on Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Oh, shit. It's well, perfect. We, we can hope, Brian. And I'll say this right now. If they drop the ball with Damian Priest and nothing really substantial happens with this cash-in or whatever, then you probably just like, need to retire the money in the bank. Oh, I'm like the I'm women's done. side where EO has actually held it and made it. Yeah. This uh, money in the bank yeah. thing has been a joke anymore. The men's the, men. the men's has been, yes. They they definitely need to do something credible with this one. I don't for know. For the what... women, sure. It's been fine. Yeah. I really hope that that happens though. I hope Damien cashes in on Drew McIntyre. And if you if that happens, remember folks, you heard that here first. Okay. Right here I said on that. Pro Wrestling Tonight, episode two. <laughs> Well, I think I want to comment on that a little further, too, because there's, uh, you know, we all listen to Cornette also, but uh, he and Brian were discussing the other day that the Judgment Day, and I brought this up as well, has seemed to become pretty much a joke, like no one takes them serious. 
Like they they had the whole R Truth thing, which now I think about it, maybe it was by design. You bring R Truth in, it starts shaking up the things because Rhea's been off on her own a lot. If she's Priest doing catches Naya, in, then maybe he Naya leaves. Jackson. You know, so maybe they're just going to disband that group after. Cause you just got to find a way to get the tag titles off of uh, Finn and Priest. Well, I. I think that happens in Perth because I think our truth is going to screw up and cost them the titles. And I oh. I wouldn't be surprised if we initially get at Mania Damian Priest versus our truth. Yes. That's that kind of seems yeah. like that might be where it's going. And then maybe our Damian beats our truth and then later the night cashes in for the world the world title. I'm deep but want our truth and the Miz to beat them for the title. You know, you know what, Biggs? Actually, it's not bad either. That'd be a good Mania match, too. There's a and lot of ways it can go with this. Because he lost the belt, so he uh, cashes in. Yeah, there's I a lot of think, ways. I think, ultimately, Damian Priest is going to be a babyface at some point. Well, I think it was supposed so, to happen until Punk came back. Because all of a sudden, uh, yeah. you know, he was kind of toeing the line, and then all of a sudden, Punk came back, and then all of a sudden, he was back to being <laughs> just a, a dick again. Uh, Who the hell knows? Punk, well, Punk coming back and then Punk immediately, right yeah, Punk came back, changed plans, got hurt immediately, and then changed plans again. At least you can say things are unpredictable. Yeah. So it's, it's all good. And then I the like whole, it. yeah, the whole Cody and Rock thing, that it, that would be as crazy unpredictable right now. Well, yeah. Uh, that was well, they're much. intentionally leaking bad stories to the dirt sheets to keep everybody on their toes. Yeah. Go it seems like that. It really should. does. They should. And then uh, one last topic here. This may be brief. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh. We have guys like Randy, AJ, LA Knight, sort of Gunther, uh, Is Bob. Logan Bob. Paul, Bobby Knight. Lashley, all LA these Knight guys. Logan Paul at WrestleMania. Yeah, all, all these guys with no current, at least no current direction going into Mania. It's on. You saw the Bleacher Report notification today, didn't you? No, I didn't. Oh, my. I don't have Bleacher Report. Oh, uh, there's a notification today that said uh, superstars that might be without a path after Mania. Are you so serious? I thought that's where you... yes, I was just I thinking about that today. I just wrote it down on the notes. No. <laughs> so I thought you stole it from that. No, I really. Not. I didn't. But, uh, oh, man. But, yeah, so do you guys have any idea? Like matches you want to see, like Randy Orton have, Bobby Lashley. Well, uh, I forgot who put it in the chat, but I think that AJ versus LA Knight would be a good Mania match, and then that could determine where they go from that there. one. I've heard that one, and I've also heard uh, LA Knight versus Logan Paul. Yeah, For the title. Yeah, the U.S. title. Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I think that's what's happening. But, but then I think see, Randy, you know it, I you know, you guys have convinced me Randy's probably going to be involved in the bloodline thing. So have have AJ out. and Randy had a mania match together? Yeah, I think they did. I think so. Maybe. If they haven't, a I can see them ago? doing that this year. But I I feel like they have. They can do another triple threat between the three of them. I have a feeling they've they've had one. Yeah, but I can't remember. Hell, it could be a fatal Look. four-way for the U.S. title. Logan Paul, Randy Orton, L.A. Knight, AJ Styles. Oh, yeah. They Hopefully like to do not. those. <laughs> One title, Randy Orton's never. And then it, it, it looks like we're getting Jimmy versus Jay for Mania. Yes. Uh, but yeah. Looks like Rhea uh, and Becky. Gunther versus Bobby would be cool. Gunther yeah. versus Sammy Zayn, possibly. Oh, man, that's a good one. That's Sammy great. Sammy has been talking yeah. about how he wants a title. Oh, that'd be a great match, so, too. So maybe maybe he's the one that beats Gunther. Who knows? Oh, that'd make me excited. Well, who is all that. in the elimination chamber? Bobby Lashley, LA Knight, Randy. Stack chamber. Pretty stacked. Uh, let me pull up the card here. I have it in the Discord. The stack chamber match, though, it's... It is. Both of them are pretty stacked. I'll say about Chad Gable, it's probably not likely he'll get the Intercontinental title match. Because they just, I don't know, it doesn't seem like they're doing much with them at this point. Sad. 
So right now, the Elimination Chamber match, uh, it is for a World Heavyweight Championship match at WrestleMania 40. Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton versus Bobby Lashley versus LA Knight. Oh, Kevin Owens, too. We don't know where he's going for Mania. Uh, and oh. then versus Logan Paul. You think they could continue that storyline in the Mania, Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens? They could. Oh, God. I would just say that they might. I don't. I I, don't I, know I have a feeling that United care. States match is going to be a multi-man match. Because <laughs> LA Knight's <laughs> going after him. Uh, Kevin Owens is going yeah. after him. Isn't AJ well, going after probably, them? Uh, is AJ, uh, AJ involved? AJ should be going, AJ should no, be going after LA Knight. Anybody? Hmm. Maybe it is AJ and LA Knight, and then. Kevin Owens and Logan Paul. But we've already seen Kevin Owens versus Logan Paul twice. Is it really that special at Mania for a third time? Well, both times, though, it was a screw job. Maybe they well, have, like, a no funny. DQ or something. It was funny that L.A. interfered in A.J.'s uh, qualifying match, but A.J. didn't do the same for L.A. Strange. Them two, them two will probably have some kind of issue inside the chamber. Wouldn't be surprised if they start the match, A.J. and L.A. Knight. AJ's not in it. AJ's not in it? I thought I said his name was on it. No. Oh, okay. He got eliminated. All right. Did LA Knight cost him? That's uh, what yeah. I said. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what you meant by interference. Okay. Well, what about Shinsuke? Who's he matching up with? Shit, dude. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shinsuke. You know what Shinsuke is Family. now? Shinsuke is the new Dolph Ziggler. Oh. He really is. He comes out of nowhere just to challenge these guys that need a good match. Just to put him over. Oh, Easy, son. Ricky is enjoying Nick Nimitz on his uh, war path. Oh. Now. You want TNA? <laughs> sure. TNA, New Japan, Puerto Rico. It's all great. I need to start watching TNA again. I haven't watched it. I got kind of turned off with the Scott DeMore thing. Yeah. Uh, I just yesterday watched the newest episode. It was pretty good. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll get back on it. But yeah, so I don't know. There's a lot of this. This WrestleMania is highly unpredictable. There's like a million different ways they can go with everybody, especially the bloodline thing. So, but you guys have any other little uh, little things you want to bring up before we wrap it up here? Funny you should ask. Uh oh. Oh god. <laughs> No, I just want to say, uh, I, I know I messaged this in the group chat, but only two of us even commented on it, but the New sure. Japan pay-per-view at the start of this month, the New Beginnings Osaka, mm -hmm. sure. it was really, really entertaining. I think Blazer hasn't watched it yet, but uh, there was a really good uh, rematch between Brian Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr. that was pretty epic. Oh, that match finally happened? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'm I'm honestly going to go out and say this, and I'm sure the IWC will shit a brick, but I think right now, out of all wrestling, the two match of the year candidates on my list both come from that pay-per-view, and it's the Zack Sabre Jr. Brian Danielson match, or the Bullet Club War Dogs versus uh, United Empire and Will Ospreay cage match. I have never seen a match so good so in my life this is this is a uh ignorant fan question here i'll probably get comments you need to watch wrestling more uh, uh -huh. what what are the bullet club war dogs are they like the actual oh. bullet club yes they're the official war, they're the official bullet club and then david finley calls all other bullet club cosplay pretty much is what he calls them okay so they're bullet pretty much club. knocking off bullet club gold yeah, and uh, ABC and TNA. Yeah, and then the OC and uh, WWE. With the Blazer right knows there. about the War Dogs. My guy Gabe Kidd in there. Which yeah. actually with the Son, OC. That, oh, that's my guy too. Bitch. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was going to say something else we didn't talk about. It looked like the OC were having a breakup. On NXT? Well, they, uh... They just made a run in on NXT. Good. At all three of them? Uh Gallows and Anderson. Yeah, remember AJ chewed them out in the locker room. 
and uh, uh, Anderson yes. got in AJ's face, and they were about to fight. Oh, did you guys see my text about yeah. that? No, I did not. Oh, Tomatonga is report, rep- yeah, reportedly <laughs> on his way to NXT, and they're thinking the way to bring him in is with the OC since he was part of the original Bullet Club. Oh, so maybe AJ leaves and he comes in. Well, maybe that could make Gallows and Anderson actually serious again. Yeah. I like oh. those guys' comedy shtick, but it got old because it was nonstop. The box. Cry oh. loves their uh, little pay-per-views they used to. Yeah, those are fun, but then but then they, they came back to WWE, and what have they done? <laughs> Literally nothing. <laughs> They've been gone for half of their contract so far. They let AJ Styles get destroyed by Solo. Well, yeah. <laughs> They're incompetent. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it here. We are going to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, we will be back on Saturday. That's right. Getting up at 4 Ooh. o'clock in the morning for Ricky. Right and early, boys. 5 o'clock for me. We are going to do a live reaction that's stream thanks. to Elimination Chamber. Yes, Biggs also, 5 a.m. Yeah. Biggs, make sure you get this, them cherry so Pepsis weird. on ice, son. Get them ready. Our, our glorious king will not be. He'll be having his rest. Yes, he's he will be having the king's that's rest right. at 5 a.m. much deserved rest. And then when he if wakes wake up. up if I wake up in the middle of the night, I might randomly jump on Discord. And then we're going to wake him up. On camera, babe, we're going to wake him up with spoilers. The saviors will be at the Elimination Chamber watch along. Yes, you like that. My Our new name is yes, official. Yeah, yeah, that also breaking news there. The PWO has rebranded. They are now the saviors. We have risen above the PWO. We are here to save everyone. We are the saviors. Son. The PWO is dead. We are Just here like to Daniel save Garcia's everyone. father. It is dead. <laughs> we have ascended, son. We it's are like Jericho savers. 2008. We are here to save everyone. Oh, my yes. God. All right. With that, we will see you all on Saturday for Elimination Chamber. Hope everyone has a good rest of their week. Peace out, everyone. <laughs>